Yeah, Coach, I believe the, the first transfer you guys landed was in your position group when you added Eric Munoz from Utah State. Just in particular, what did you see out of him that made you want him in your room? You know, uh, on film, you know, Eric covered a lot of a lot of a lot of ground on the field. You know, he uh, played one of his best games against Wyoming, which was in interesting. But uh, I felt like Eric uh, uh, played hard, played with a sense of urgency on, on the tape, and then showing up here during winter conditioning, he's really done a nice job as far as bringing maturity uh, to the linebacker room. Uh, one of the hardest workers we have and he pushed the room he pushed the other linebackers right away in winter conditioning and uh i'm really glad we have eric here yeah and then or i think a couple of days ago we, we talked to coach Klanderman, and he said perhaps the deepest position room on your defense is your linebackers would you agree with that and just how has that kind of developed and turned into something i apologize you, you went out there for a second when you said coach Klanderman said something about the linebackers he said it was the deepest room on your guys. Oh, deep. deep I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, the thing that's been encouraging, uh, the, the, the culture, the attitude of that room has been uh, much improved. Uh, I've been really pleased with a lot of the guys stepping up and trying to uh, lead in that room. And they've been pushing each other. You know, the old, the old proverb is iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another is really holding true in that room right now. And there's great competition going on in that room for playing time. Uh, couldn't be happier with the uh, the attitude of the room right now. And how has Wayne Jones added to your group? He's obviously someone that transitioned from safety. Yeah, you bet. Same thing. I mean, Wayne brings maturity. Wayne brings experience. Um, love having the opportunity to coach Wayne, and uh, we're hoping to find a place in there uh, for Wayne. Definitely as a Sam linebacker. You know, he's still trying to learn a little bit about playing in the box uh, as a will linebacker. But uh, Wayne brings uh, depth, certainly, to that position. Thanks, Coach. You bet. John? Yeah, Steve, just how, how daunting is it to lose guys that have played as much football for you as Justin Hughes and, and Eliza Sullivan from last year? Yeah, you know, no doubt. You know, both those guys, uh, we appreciate everything they brought, you know, to Kansas State football over the last four or five years, or maybe with J Ball's case, six years, seven years. You know, it seems like he's been here so long. But uh, no doubt that, you know, it's tough to lose that kind of experience. But I think, you know, guys like Cody Fletcher, uh, even though Cody hasn't only been out there, you know, from a part time standpoint, uh, working on seven on seven, uh, Cody has really stepped in to a leadership role there and is trying to fill that vacuum, uh, along with uh, Daniel Green, who I think has had an outstanding spring. Um, but yeah, it's, you, you, you can't ever just replace guys like those two or that experience. Um, but, you know, Deuce and, and Cody played a lot of football for us, you know, last year, and that will certainly show uh, on the field this year, having those kind of reps. The big challenge is going to be, okay, who's going to, give us those extra 20, 25 reps like Deuce and Cody did. And that's what we're trying to figure out right now. You know, who, who are those guys going to be? Is it going to be Nick? Is it going to be Austin? Is it going to be Eric? Is it going to be Wayne? Is it going to be Ryan? We just got to kind of work through that here, the remainder of spring. But the competition and their attitude is tremendous. Yeah, but Daniel Green specifically, what have you seen from him the most that gives you that kind of optimism about his improvement this year? You know, the thing with Daniel is, He's gone about his business uh, all, all spring, but just in the last week, his uh, attention to the detail of finishing every play and, and grinding out every play has improved uh, dramatically. And I, I'm really encouraged what I've seen you know, in the last week and a half from, from Daniel. And if he can stay on that trajectory, um, I think uh, he, he's going to be a really good linebacker for us. Appreciate it, Steve. Thanks. Yep. Fitz. Hey, Coach, uh, sticking with Daniel Green, what are some of his skills that he really brings to that position group for you? you know, one, Daniel's a smart football player, and he spends time with it, and he takes pride in knowing not only his position but what everyone else on the defense is doing. And he's a good communicator. He's probably one of our best communicators. He and Wayne Jones are probably two of the better ones. Um, but the thing that Daniel is – really improved upon is he, we call heavy hands. He's got heavy hands and he's really using his hands and separating from blockers and getting off blocks much better than I think he did last year. 
And so he's not just taking care of his gap. He's using his long levers to take care of his gap and get off blocks and work to other gaps. And I think he's put himself around the ball much more this spring than just, hey, I got B gap and I'm in the gap. And also with Coach Klanderman mentioning that you have such a deep room, who are some of the young guys that maybe are, are working their way up that uh, are showing themselves this spring? Yeah, you bet. You know, <clears throat> I, I know you all know about him, but, you know, Austin Moore is mm -hmm. a young man that's making a strong push. Nick Allen, you know, has been around, but, you know, Nick doesn't have quite the uh, playing time that some of the other guys may have had. But Nick's making a strong push right now. Uh, Ryan Hennington, I still consider him young to the position, even though he's been here for a while, but he's still every day. Ryan's learning, uh, the position, uh, cause he hasn't played defense much in his career and so, things that you kind of take for granted that a guy would know he's still a little bit of a, of a sponge and a, and a novice, but, uh, he works at it. Uh, all three of those guys, Nick Austin and, uh, and Ryan, you know, a young man that's with us, uh, Devante. You know, Devante, uh, he's a senior in high school. We got to keep reminding ourselves of, but I think he's going to have a bright future. And he's, he's another young man that has a good football IQ. And he's learning to work hard at a young age because right now he's around a bunch of guys that are showing the way of how to, how to practice and how to finish. Uh, Bo Palmer, there's a young man that he leads the team right now in strips and punches. And if you watch him out there running around on the practice field, he's always by the football. I mean, his cardio uh, base, it must be tremendous because he does not take a playoff and we compliment him on it all the time. I don't know if Bo has very many loafs on, on, on the, on the spring. I'm intrigued by something you just said about Ryan Hennington, moving a quarterback to safety is pretty common. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that knowledge base train translates really well to the other side of the ball, but how does it help him as a linebacker? Well, <clears throat> It helps him from the standpoint he, he sees the big picture, especially in pass coverage. You know, I think he uh, he's got a good vision of the field. You know, some some guys can play like you know the horses with those blinders on, and you know Ryan has good vision. He sees a lot of the field like a quarterback has to see it, and he understands key progression and those things. His big thing right now is just learning how when you go into contact from a from a leverage standpoint because the fight happens a lot quicker. And the guys coming on you happen faster and, and, and a little bit bigger. And the other thing, you know, we give Ryan a hard time about just because he's been on the other end of it, but learning to play off cut blocks, which our offense gives us a, a lot of over the course of the spring and keeping your eyes on the blocker, you know, and not trying to see over the top of things. You know, when you're a quarterback, you're seeing over the top of the O-line, you're seeing over the top of things 30, 40 yards down the field. At linebacker, you start looking over the top of those big guys blocking you or those, or those guys trying to cut you, it doesn't work out very well. So those are the kind of the things that he's, he's working himself through right now. How, how did he handle his first cut block? <laughs> how did he handle it? Probably like a lot of guys, his feet went off out from underneath him and he uh, didn't get hurt, which is always a, a, a nice thing. But, you know, he's had a couple of hard falls this spring, you know, and he gets frustrated with it because he, you know, I mean, he, he, he's like, what can we go? What else? What, is, what else can we do drill wise? What else can we go do to work on this? Because he does not want it to happen to him, you know, uh, oh. day in, day out. You know, nobody does. But, you know, that's what makes Ryan a special guy. He, he's going to put forth the effort physically and mentally to try to correct anything. Appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Last one here, Derek. Coach, I know it's not your position group, but how how well has Timothy Horn looked at defensive tackle, and is he alleviating some of that pressure off your linebackers because he's been so effective? Yeah, you know, Tim's uh, a young man. You know, we've really done well with some of the young men that we've brought into the program here uh, in, in January. And same thing with Tim. Tim has brought competition into that room, um, and it's made the other D linemen better. And it, Tim is a, a bigger body with some athleticism and some twitch. And it's been really uh, encouraging to see him up there because there's not a lot of guys that are going to climb off of a double team when Tim's in there. They're going to have to keep two offensive linemen on him for a little bit longer at time, which allows us at linebacker to tempo our gaps and do some of the things I was talking about, like with Deuce being able to take care of a B gap and being able to fall back, you know, the backside D gap. And which allows us to get more people, you know, to the party. And, and if they're able to single block up front, then we get, we have to, you know, fight with those guys. And Tim doesn't allow that. And it's kind of, you know, it's been fun to see him in there because, you know, Tim 
when he showed up here, I don't think he'd had a winter conditioning, you know, like we have. And then he's certainly not used to double repping. <laughs> and so he's getting more reps than he probably ever has. And he, he's learned to work through that. But yeah, he uh, is uh, going to be a nice addition to the, to the D line.